Hey guys! Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about my gallbladder, or I guess now, like thereof. Um, I'm going to talk about how, you know, I found out I had gallstones to having it removed, and then um, how I'm living without a gallbladder. So let's rewind, oh goodness, over 10 years ago, probably like 10, 15 years ago uh, in high school. So all throughout high school, I didn't eat well. Um, my family was not a family that liked to cook or eat at home. We ate out a lot, fast food. So it was not um, rare for me to eat, you know, like a cappuccino in the morning and then for lunch have like the hot lunch, which usually I'd get like a spicy chicken sandwich and fries, and then for dinner grab like McDonald's or Burger King or something like that. So that was kind of like my diet. Not great, not full with nutrition and all that, like not good at all, <laughs> um, at least to my standards that I live by now. So growing up like that obviously didn't do great things for my body. Oddly enough, I was still very, very skinny. Um, I was actually very underweight even though I ate like crap. Um, I just had a very fast metabolism and yeah, so back then I thought, well since I'm underweight or I'm, I'm skinny, I'm probably fine and I was active because I had gym class and all that and in high school you get up every hour to move to your next class so I was, I was active. Um, so I didn't think anything of it. And then probably sophomore year or so I started getting, getting these stomach aches. Um, kind of like right here um, and I always I thought it was heartburn or something like that I, I talked to my doctor um, and I've had the same doctor since I was 11 years old and I'm 28 going on 29 so and I still see that same doctor so she knows me she knows my family history um, and I told her about it and she said it sounds like gas or you know indigestion so it takes some tubs or something like that when you feel that way so I would and it would go away so I thought it was that and then eventually, I think it was in 2012, is when it got really, really bad. Um, the cramping or the pain would last for a lot longer. In the past, it would only last like 15, 20 minutes. This was lasting like like an hour or more, and it was very intense pain. And so much that I went to the ER one night. Um, I'm not the type of person to go to the doctor or hospital or definitely not the ER for anything really. Um, it has to be pretty severe for me to go. That was actually the one and only time I've gone to the to the ER <laughs> for myself. Um, I'm someone that likes to try to heal myself naturally as much as I can, um, you know, and at that time I'd like take Advil or Tums. So I would take Advil or Tums and it still wasn't going away. It got to the point where I was about to go into one of my classes uh, in college and I was sitting outside waiting you know, for the last class to get out and for us to get in. And I was like doubled over like in a fetal position, like rocking back and forth because the cramps were so bad. It felt better to be like in a fetal position or like really, really stretched out. So I went into the class and I sat there for a little bit and eventually I was like, teacher, I gotta go, professor, I have to go. Like I can't sit through this class, I'm in so much pain. So then I walked to my car went into the back seat and I was just like rolling around in my back seat. It was awful. Um, so fast forward a few weeks later, I was home and it happened again at like at night and me and Gary, my fiance, we went to the ER to see what was going on. They did, an, um, did some testing and by the time they actually saw me, the pain was gone. Um, but they said kind of the same thing, like it must be just an ingestion or something like that. Then fast forward a few more weeks later and I was home again and I was with my mom during the day and I had another episode and so then we went to my primary care physician. She wasn't available but one of the other doctors were so they took me in real quick um, then ordered me an ultrasound so then a few days later I went and got the ultrasound and that's when they said yep you have gallstones. Um, and gallstones and, and all that and having gallbladder issues is hereditary. Um, my grandma had to get her gallbladder removed and then I believe her sister had to get hers removed. Um, and it's odd, I think my, my doctor didn't think that was it because normally most people that have like gallstones or gallbladder issues are older.
and heavier. And I was like, I was 22 and skinny. You know, I was healthy for the most part. I wasn't overweight. So I can see why my doctor didn't think that. Um, but luckily the other doctor I saw had recommended to get an ultrasound and that's when they found out. So then um, I scheduled, uh, you know, we found that out, talked to my primary care physician and she said I recommend for you to get it removed or she actually she referred me to someone else, another doctor, a specialist, a uh, surgeon actually. And then she said, you know, we recommend for you to get it removed um, so that you don't have this pain anymore. You really don't need your gallbladder. So then a few months later, I, in the summer of 2012, or 2002, yes, 2000, no, 2012, sorry. Uh, summer of 2012, I got my gallbladder removed, and since then I haven't had any pain. Um, have, you know, and if you're not familiar with the gallbladder, it helps um, store liver, or, or store bile to help your liver and all that, and it helps store bile that helps break down fat. So, um, you don't necessarily need it, but it, your body works more optimally, obviously, with it. But unfortunately for me and the diet I had, such a high-fat diet, um, every time I ate like a really, really bad meal or like a, I had a really bad day of just like really high-fat foods, it would upset my gallstones and um, it, they would start moving. And that movement is what I kept feeling, that pain of the gallstones like moving inside my body. So. Um, I don't have that pain anymore because my gallbladder is out as well as the gallstones. So, yeah. So that's what happened. Um, my recovery was pretty quick. Um, yeah, I mean, I have three. Let me see if I can show you. I have three incisions. So here, here, actually four. Here, here, and here. And then they went through my belly button. Um, to take it all out. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I healed fine. I have a few scars, obviously, but nothing too crazy. Um, now, I do get a little, I'm sensitive to really high fat foods. Um, yeah, you know, I get, I can't process really high fat foods, like really bad. Like, I mean, like I can digest like avocados and coconut oil, avocado oil, like healthy fats, salmon, I'm fine. It's like the trans fat and the really, like, sometimes fast food does it to me, um, and all that. So, I am, because of that, I think is where my health journey really started happening, is because I was like, oh crap, like, I'm eating like crap, and I feel like crap, and look at what happened. Um, it could have been, I think it could have been avoided if I hadn't eaten so bad um, a majority of my life. Um, so now I don't have a gallbladder and I have to be a little more careful on what I eat. Um, specifically for me, I've noticed that in the morning, or the, it doesn't even have to be in the morning, the first thing I eat, let's say I eat at 8 in the morning or for some reason I just couldn't find time and I'm eating my first meal is like lunchtime. It doesn't matter the time of the day, it just matters what my first thing I eat is. What's waking up my digestion system? And I can't have certain things like Bacon, I can't really have in the morning. Um, really high fat, trans, you know, high fat stuff. I just can't handle right away. But so typically, I'll have something light or very plain for breakfast, um, or something that I know my body can digest and it's not gonna freak out. Um, and then the rest of the day, I can eat like McDonald's or something or something like normal food, normal food, like high fat food. I'll be fine. But if I don't start my day off that way and I eat something really heavy and rich and like heavy, um, I have to go to the bathroom. I have to go number two and it ain't pretty. I think you understand. But yeah, and then, so for me, if as long as I start my day eating something I know my body can digest well and easy, the rest of my day is pretty much fine. Um, there are other, you know, sometimes I eat something even after I had a plain breakfast Sometimes there's food that triggers me, and I sometimes I don't understand it because pizza, like dairy, not good for me. I cannot, my body cannot process dairy very well, and that was, you know, that was pretty common um, even when I was growing up. I didn't really like it; didn't settle well with me. So, but even more so now, dairy like can upset my stomach. Um, so, but yeah, so dairy. I'll eat pizza, which is 
has lots of dairy on it, and I'll be fine. But I'll eat, like yesterday I took, I had a little shot of, um, it was the Patron coffee flavor with um, some rum chata. It was a mixed drink, half and half of each, and that I think just didn't settle all well of my stomach. I mean, yes, it was alcohol, but I, I consume alcohol enough that it shouldn't have upset me because it's alcohol. I think it was the dairy part of it, and like it was only this amount of dairy, and that upset my stomach. But yet I can eat pizza and I'm fine. So I've been trying to keep a journal or like noting what I've been eating when I have an upset stomach or I have to go to the bathroom, if you know what I mean. Um, and it's just, I think it might be just some food combining or something like that, but yeah, so, so that's kind of in my journey and that's, and having my gallbladder issues I think really kick-started my whole health and wellness journey um, because I have to be careful of what I eat a little more than I used to. Um, and just reflecting back, I think, yeah, definitely my bad, like, diet and health and, like, what I ate when I was growing up definitely affected my body in such a negative way that I had to get a part of me removed. <laughs> so, um, definitely something to think about if, you know, and, and also it's crazy because I was not the normal demographic of someone that would have gallstones or have to get their gallbladder removed. Um, and that just goes to show you just because you're skinny doesn't mean you're healthy. Um, and unfortunately I think that's what I had thought when I was younger because I was like, well, you know, I'm, I'm healthy, I'm skinny, I, I'm active, and I get a stomach ache every now and then, I take tubs and it goes away. Never thought much of it. Now looking back, obviously, that had a lot to do with it, as well as obviously being a little genetic because my grandmother had to get hers removed and her sister. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of my gallbladder journey, if you will, um, or yeah, and kind of just to show you, or I hope you learned something, you know, maybe if you're having these stomach pains, um, kind of right, like right under your chest, like right here, um, and you take, and it doesn't go away, and you, and you notice what you're eating when that happens, um, it could be gallstones. Um, I have another friend that is also not the demographic. She's just a few years older than me right now and um, healthy. She's actually vegan, um, skinny, and she has gallstones. And she's trying to treat it herself um, instead of getting surgery. But yeah, um, just be careful what you're eating. Really listen to your body. And I think that's what I wasn't doing. I wasn't really listening to my body when I was younger. Um, and that's kind of why now I do and why I practice more of an intuitive eating. Um, just try to really listen to my body. Like, if it's not feeling well, well, what have I eaten? If it is feeling well, what have I eaten to help it, you know? So that's it. That's my story. I hope um, it was interesting and I hope some, th some of you learned something. Um, if you have any questions or want me to do like a Q&A about it or whatever just if you have questions leave them down below um and yeah i hope you enjoyed this video it's a little different but um it is you know not having a gallbladder is a big part of my life um and like what i eat so i figured i should share that because i don't think i've ever really shared that part of me um so yeah i hope you liked it and let me know if you have any questions below and i will see you guys in the next video bye